she made me cool now I did that you know some God this morning we want to worship you Lord King of King the Lord of the Lord Yes. 
Mr. Divya to read Psalms 100. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before the presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is who He has made us, not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into the gates with thanksgiving and the courts with praises. Be thankful unto them and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting. And it's true to any way to all generation. Let's all lift our Bible in faith. Thank you, Lord, for your one living God and Son, that whoso believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you this morning because of the Son, we are in this place, O oh Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who is teaching us every day, every part of our life, Lord, as we are going to listen to the Word of God. Let the Holy Spirit penetrate into our heart. Teach us. The greater truths, O Master, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for the nation of India. Bless my nation, O God. Bring peace, joy, harmony, great joy in our nation. I pray for the economy to be, Lord, be grown, O Master. I pray that every person, every people, every youth have a good job, good future, Lord. I also pray for the land of Israel where the Messiah was born. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. My Bible teaches, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, this morning we think about Jerusalem. We love Israel, O God. We bring them to the gracious hand. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Let's be seated. I call upon Pastor Joe to bring the word of God. Hallelujah. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's such a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you believe it? Amen. It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalms, I was glad when I was in the house of the Lord. It was a, a word which was given by King David. Hallelujah. He was a man for really loved the Lord with all his heart, all his mind and all his strength, the Bible says. And we keep on meditating past weeks about uh, prayer. There's a lot of uh, sermons in the Bible, but I really just want to teach more of uh, the secrets of God's kingdom and the secret of uh, prayer, where many preachers don't preach this. They say, you pray, you will be healed, you pray, everything will happen. But what is prayer? When he asks them, they say, no, I don't know. The greatest tragedy in human nature on the surface of the planet is not unanswered prayers. Many think it is wrong. The greatest tragedy and the greatest mistake is not about unanswered prayers. It is unoffered prayers. How many of you believe it? Amen. Amen. It is not about unanswered prayers, but it is unoffered. We know prayer solves everything the Bible says, but we don't offer the prayer what is required for the tragedy we are facing today. We breathe, we wake up, we take a bath, we have a breakfast, we go to a job. No one teaches you that. Early in the morning, we do our nature call. We go, we do ourselves because we're magic people. We come back, we say that today is my job, 8 o'clock, I have to sign in. No one says, come on, you wake up and get into. Only for kids they do. Wake up, it's time for school. And we say that it's time, your bus is coming, it's time, your school gate will be closed, please go. 
This is what we monitored for the young little children. It is must and needed. But we being a grown magic Christians, we don't need someone to guide us. We know how to operate ourselves. Early in the morning, we wake up, we take care of ourselves. We refresh, we make sure we are clean and neat and tidy. We make sure our dresses are being ironed, well dressed, well picked, right? Amen. And after that, what we do? We eat our breakfast to have an energy till the rest of the afternoon. And we sign up and we start doing our work. No one teaches you. It is your daily life. It is a walk of life. What you are being monitored because you have a high prize which you get from the company where you are working it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when it comes to the Lord, we think ourselves, why God is not answering our prayers? God is always a God who answers our prayers and Bible teaches us. Jesus himself prayed, as Pastor said in the first service, 86% of his lifestyle was about prayer. If you really have a good character of a Christian, but you don't have a prayer life, it is a wing, the Bible says. You might have a very good knowledge about the word of God. You will be well versed. You will have a theological knowledge about the word of the Lord. But if your life is not about prayer, it is when the Bible says. It is not about the knowledge what you gain. It is about the love what you build with God. Amen. That's why God said, I love and I sent my only begotten son. He did not say, I yeah, was blessed because he have gained knowledge. No, so many years I've created the earth and I've sent, I've seen massive generations, but he was not picked for that. He said, I love the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God builds a character in us, a bridge in us by shedding his love. And today there's a question which raises before most of the people of Christians saying that, well, my prayer is not answered. No, your prayer will answer one day. Your time and your term has not yet come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the greatest tragedy for a Christian faith is unoffered prayers. We say God knows everything. Yes, He's a God of omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent. He knows everything. But He hears a word from His kid Will my son will speak or not? Hallelujah. Sometimes when you're so much broken in our life, when you keep it for yourself, it is a garbage. What do you put in dustbin? It stinks. You keep on putting the trash, what happens? It stinks. What you should do? You should spell it out. Take it and put it in the garbage van. Or maybe in a bag and throw it outside. It purifies itself. Same thing, whatever the pain and the sorrow and the agony you are having in your heart, you should throw it before the Lord. You should say, Lord, this is hurting my feelings. Come on, work in it. This is disturbing my thoughts. I'm not able to concentrate on it. I'm not able to move because this has been a big stumbling block in my life. Oh, How could you ask the Lord? My prayer. He is your father who is seated in the throne, the Bible says. In the book of Revelation, it speaks about he's seated on the white throne. And Jesus has been seated beside him. And he has given us a greater comfort over the Holy Spirit who can comfort you in times of difficulties and uh, things. Actually, I would like to meditate one thing from the book of Colossians when you talk about Colossians 4. The book of Colossians 4, could anyone read it? Colossians? Yeah, 4. Master, give unto, unto your servant that which is just and equal, knowing that ye are also have a master in heaven. Continue in prayer and watch the same with thanksgiving with them, praying also for us and God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ of which I am also in bond hallelujah the first thing in prayer is all about persistence persistence means continuous prayers it's not a one day prayer it is not a group fellowship prayer it is not a prayer when you feel it, when you are down or when you are up or when you are elevated or you are demotivated. No. There should be a persistence, a continuous prayer, a non-stop prayer. Every day you should start praying. The scripture is very beautiful. It says, teach us, Master. What they are asking, they are asking the Master to teach how to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the continuous fast in prayer is very important. It's difficult, I believe. It's difficult. 
you keep on eating the same food, what happens? You feel like throwing away. Many have that habit of throwing away very easily. They don't have a habit of taking some smells, they'll be allergic. They'll be having allergic to wear some kind of like uh, same dress coat. They get allergic. They want sometimes to wear lehenga, they want to wear salwar, sometimes to wear saris, right? Ethical wear. In any different, different wear. But, but prayer, you can't have different, different wear of prayer. Nyan should have one prayer. Lord, be merciful. Amen. Be gracious. Be humble before me. I am humble before you, Lord. Right? But prayer, you can't have fashion. Yesterday I prayed this, today one more prayer. No. Same prayer. Jesus prayed same prayer. Three times he prayed the same prayer, the scripture says. In this thing, Colossians, Paul teaches a great man who wrote most of the books in the Bible and New Testament and is a man who walked along with the Lord because I can say that because he has written most of the New Testament books. He says you should have a persistence prayer. He's a man who prayed before the Lord earnestly in his life and is a life word. He's a man who really concentrated his uh, life. He knew how the Lord will operate by prayer. Today our influences of our life has become more vibrant. Our influences towards today's generation, it has become very vibrant. We say, I know everything. We don't have a mindset of learning. I was talking to one of our uh, aeronautical engineers last week. I was uh, speaking to him. I was sharing about uh, my lifestyle with him. At the same time, uh, I was asking something. I asked him, Lord, sir, how do you work? He says, it's a learning purpose for us. It's a learning thing. We can't say, I've learned it. I'm still learning, he says. And uh, shortly he said that I'm going to uh, do a paragliding uh, uh, training in Bangalore. I was encouraging him, yes sir, that is very good, you can start doing it. Uh, and I gave a wonderful name for that also. So if he starts in Bangalore, he'll be the first person to have that uh, institution and a school. And while I was talking to him, I told, we are limited people in this world. How far we can fly, but still we are limited. There's an unlimited... Uh, a strength that is God. Amen. And he asked me, how do you say, sir? Yes, you and I are talking today, love is by the grace of God. You and I are communicating this today is by the love of the Lord. If that love was not there, I would have been against you. Or I've been demotivated by your talks. Or you may be demotivated by my talks. But today we are so. He is not a Christian man. He is a worldly man who worships something. But still, the connection between him and I, it is about the prayer. God teaches, when you pray, he connects with people. Hallelujah. He connects with boundaries. He connects with places where you are not fit. He will connect it over there. He will place you in places where the devil really wanted you not to be there. But what happens is, oh, I did my this, I did that, I can do this, I can do that. But what happens is when you fail, you come to the Lord and you say, why God, you did that to me? But God would ask you a question, would you counsel with me? Did you consult with me about the things what you're going to do it? Hallelujah. It's not one day prayer, it's a persistence. It's an everyday continuous prayer. Not what all you get in your mouth and you pray. You should be very determined. Your heart, your mind, and your soul, and your body should be connected in one accord when you pray. Your prayer should be a very focused prayer. Not, I feel today happy, I sit and I pray. No, it has to be your lifestyle. Build a lifestyle of prayer. That could change. That should be your lifestyle. Not always wearing a suit is your lifestyle. That is the outer attire. But your lifestyle of a Christian faith is prayer. Why people are not moved? Because you are not moved with the presence of the Lord. Why things have not been answered on your corner? Because you are not moved. You are not fashioned. The people of Israel had prayed for 400 years, the Bible says. Not one day, two days. But for 400 years, they were so blessed in that land. But they forgot God at one point of time. And God teaches a lesson that unless every knee shall bow, and every tongue confesses, I will not move. That began a persistence prayer. David behind the sheep, he did not pray for one day, but it took many days and years, I believe. He did not have an encounter, will not come in one day. It takes years. 
It's a consistency. That's a very important thing. He prayed to the Lord. When Joseph was being sold for the uh, uh, Egyptians, he did not become the next day the governor of Egypt. It took many years for him. But the Lord saw his persistence lifestyle. He always was a man behind prayer. When allegations arise against him, he went and needs the Bible says. When people said, I will do a favor to you when I go back to uh, uh, the king, I will talk behalf of you so that you would come outside the bars. But still, he believed the law. He had a persistence prayer. He was a man who prayed that God would change me. He believed a uh, life that God is the one who brought me here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's called a persistence prayer. It's not that one day when you feel you pray and next day God never answers. No. That's not a prayer for life what I'm talking about. It is not about uh, when you have feelings you throw words. The same words after a couple of years it's been like uh, uh, heated words. Hallelujah. But prayer is not like that. When you pray that prayer is recorded in heaven. And the Lord is ready to answer that prayer. And every speech and every cry which comes from the tears of your eyes, the Lord translates it. He's a greater translator, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me see about what is a persistence prayer. The book of Luke chapter 8, 1 says, can anyone read it? The book of 18, 1. The book of Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always out to pray and not to lose heart. See, it's Jesus who spoke out of here. You should always pray and you should not lose your heart. That's what we sang the song. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. When the Lord will bless you? Always. Not one time. Not when you need a job, you, I mean, put a kneel down and pray, God, give me the job. My senior pastor prayed, he wants to get in the arm post. He prayed. One he was the one man who was educated well in his family. He studied in hostel boarding and he really wanted to be a, a lieutenant. But uh, he was thrown away from that uh, selection time. They said, medically you are unfit. He was a very qualified man, but uh, the government said you are unqualified because you are medically you are not fit. He said that I'll end my life because my passion and my dream is gone. Hallelujah. My passion and my dream is gone because I'm not qualified. But he wanted to end his life. That is the time God said, I'll bring a new start. See, a minor setback for a major comeback. That's prayer. God said, you don't need to serve the government, you need to serve my government. Amen. Today, with him, we are standing in his presence and talking about working for the same government. Hallelujah, heavenly government. You work for your company, end of the day, you are not worked for that, they'll say, come on, give the laptop, sign up and get out. The watchman will come and say, sir, your time is end. You are well known, and you are working in corporate companies, you know it. You would have put your, uh, your sweat, your talent, your ideas, your, all your knowledge, all your ups and downs, you would have done it. End of the day, what they say? Go away. They drop a mail. Go away. That's it. We have paid you. We wanted you. We kept. Now you go away. But God is not like that. The moment when you do for something for Him, it is written in His book, the Bible says. Amen. And Jesus says in the parable, he was telling them a parable to show them that all times they ought to pray all times. Not one time, but all time. And not to lose a heart. See, when you pray, that you will not lose your heart, the first thing. When you pray, you will not lose your heart. When you don't pray, you will lose your heart. Whoever is any laden and burden, come unto me, I'll give you rest, the Bible says. Then a lot of worldly feelings. This is not there. That is not there. See my friend, so nice she is. See my friend, so blessed he is. See his wife is so beautiful. See, don't pray for a person which is not going to happen. Many are praying that I need a wife like Aishwarya. She has become old. She is married, she is having kids, she has become old. 
That chapter is closed. Don't pray for that prayer. That is wrong. Gone. You pray which is going to happen. See, many are praying like this. All foolish prayers. A persistence prayer. What is a prayer to do the will of the Lord? And Jesus says that one. Pray that your hearts will not lose. That means keep your heart what God really wants to do it. I want to take another verse for you. The book of Luke chapter 11 verse 9. The book of Luke chapter 11 verse 9. I read a lot of scriptures. The time is running very close up. And I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Hallelujah. When you read all these things, these are not the past things what Jesus said, but these are the present things what he is going to do it. That means when you knock, it's a present. You're going to open the doors of heaven. Hallelujah. When you see, you will find them. Hallelujah. When you call him, he, you can listen to the voice of the Lord. It's a present thing. Things what the God is telling Jesus does not want us to give up in prayer, but always win things by prayer. When Joshua was supposed to get defeated, he don't know what to do. He was trapped by the enemy camp. And that is the time the Spirit of the Lord speaks to him. Come on, Joshua. It's the time now to pray. It's the time to sing. It is the time to bring the adorations of God. When you do it, God will break all the Amen. walls and the plans of satanic forces. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is a mighty God. Amen. You can know the strength of God when you start kneeling and praying. Amen. The reports what doctors are given will turn into be negative. Be Hallelujah. Because he's a God who has created you. He's designed you for a purpose. He has called you for a higher calling. Hallelujah. Why my life is still same? Because untold prayers. It's not unanswered prayers, but unoffered prayers. The prayers we should have done many years back. Why my blessings has not yet come? Because unoffered prayers. We haven't offered that prayer to the Lord. The Lord is waiting. When my kid will talk, when my son will speak, when he will ask about this. But you'll say, God knows everything. No, God knows everything. But you should do your work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I should do your part. That's what he says. Knock first. Seek first. Call me first. And I will be there. I will open you. I will exalt you. Because you have known my name, the Bible Amen. says, Amen. you have known my name, I'll take you to the higher places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What you cannot do, your pride will do it. Amen. That's the secret. Amen. You can't go stand before anyone. No. You can't even stand before your boss, he'll scold you and say, get out, man, from here. But you start praying, he will come and he'll talk. He will talk to you. How are you? What's happening with you? I hope all is well with you. I'm so happy that you're working for my company. Your family members will come next to you. They will knock at you. They'll say, there's something peace with you. It's because the presence of the Lord is a peace with Hallelujah. Your life will change. There will be a great fragrance of heaven will be surrounded. You put a beautiful perfume, what happens is, people will admire it when they smell it. Not only for you, even for the people who is walking uh, next to you. You'll feel oh, so nice he's smelling. When you pray, you'll have the same essence of prayer, of heaven. They'll say, this man is so good, this girl is so good, so nice they are. How? We have a presence of the Lord. Amen. The Lord will cover it. That's what the life of Joseph happened. When he started praying, the obstacles started to eradicate from his life. And the Lord said, that, now it is time, Joseph, I will rise you. The king calls, the king is telling, now call that Joseph, I want to talk to him. Now King Saul is telling, call that David, I want, who is he? I want to know. Hallelujah. See how there is a transformation in prayer. There is a chemistry which happens in prayer. You keep on speaking to your friend and after what you will say. If it is not benefited, thank you man, I will get back to you. We should understand there is nothing benefited from us. But you pray that invest the time to the Lord, Lord will invest his blessings on your life. He'll install great things on your life, a great plans and a purpose when you have the persistence prayer. Hallelujah. Now let's go to the next one. It's called pray with passion. First was persistence and second thing is pray with passion. Let's return to the book of Luke chapter 3 verse 1. The book of Luke chapter 3 verse 1.
Now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, the Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea and Herod being the Tetari of Galali. Luke 3 1. Galilee and his brother Philip, the Tarius of Etria, of the reign of Tar Tarniostos and Lesanias, and the Tarius of Aibili, and Anna and Kaipa being, being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness, and he came into all the country about Jordan preaching and the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin as it is written in the book of uh, written in the book of the word of Isaiah the prophet saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare ye a way for the Lord and make his path straight every valley shall be filled every mountain and hill shall be brought low and the crook shall be made straight and the tough way shall be made smooth. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Read it, read it. Then he said to the multitude, came forth to baptize of him, O generation of viper, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth thereof the fruit worthy of repentance, and being not saying within yourself, we are the Abraham, our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid under the root of the tree. Every tree therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is eaved down and cast into fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do to them? He answered and said unto them, he that had two coal, let him impart to him, and had got none. And he that had got me, let him do likewise. They came unto publican to be baptized, and said unto them, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Extract no more than, than that which is appointed you. Hallelujah. When you read the entire chapter of Luke, chapter 3, verse 1, it teaches about the passion of prayer. And second thing is, when you see the passion, the heaven's door opened up in that place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a place where salvation comes. When you pray, the salvation of God has been put on in life. Like as we have an Atari, and we are wearing it to showcase we are so beautiful for the world. And same thing for an heavenly raiment, you need to have Jesus as your attire. And the scripture, when you keep on reading, it teaches about the baptism of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Baptism. And the moment when there was a baptism of Jesus, the scripture says the heaven's door opened. It's a very big chapter. When you see in the 22nd verse, and the Holy Ghost descended in a, a bodily shape like a dove upon him, and a voice came from heaven which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In thee I am well pleased. So when you pray, there is a passion and there is a heaven open door which is just going to get open. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Haley. Hallelujah. What happens when you pray? You have a heaven's door open. You have a key. You go back home, you have a key. Correct? You have a key, your house door key. You open it, what happens is you go. When other people use your key, what happens is? The cops will come, chasing it. Hey, who are you man to enter this house? Same way, when you pray, God has given you a key of heaven and the heaven's door will open. What is the key? The key is Jesus. 
The name Jesus will open the doors of heaven. And whatever the blessings have been stopped is because you are fighting in prayer but not using the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you use the name of God, the key is open. Heaven is open. It is not about you. It is about Jesus, the time. What a mighty Savior He died for me on the cross of Calvary. Bring a passionate prayer. Jesus had a passionate prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Bible says, He prayed blood and thirst came from the body. The Bible says, I am not asking you to pray that. We are not qualified for that prayer. Pray at least you should have your sense. You should have your mind in that. At least you pray, you should have your confidential in that, what you are praying. Not something which is unknown things. Not asking someone who is like marrying an Aishwarya Rai or Amitabh Bachchan or something. You are old. Your time is going to get in that. Right? Don't pray for that. Pray something which is very valuable. What is valuable? Surrounded your lifestyle. God, use me. Use this vessel for thy glory. I have wasted my time for this world. Henceforth, I'm not going to do for that. Rest of my life, I'm going to surrender my life before thee. I want to do something pleasing you. And the Lord will start functioning it. See, the Bible says, at the age of 30 years, he started to do the ministry. Hallelujah. See, age also counts the best thing. Many people say, I become old, then I come to church. I know many boys who said that. Now I'm very young. When I turn to be 50 or 55, I come. They're all in graveyard. Seriously, I'm talking. They're all in graveyard. Even the sand has covered them. I think even bones exist or not, I don't know. But I told them, hey, no man, this is a age here. No pastor, we are very young. We need to taste the world. They tasted the world, they are into the graveyard. It's funny, but it's very reality. See, when you taste the world, it will lead us to the graveyard. But when you taste the Lord, it will really reach you to the eternal oh, world. You will be a mountain mover. Joseph submitted his life when he was very young. Jacob submitted his life when he was very young. Daniel submitted his life when he was very young. David submitted his life when he was very young. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They all they submitted, they gave their lifestyle for God. And God was the life fashioner for them. He will be his uh, manicure or pedicure or fashion designer, whoever, whatever you want to call it as. God will be a role model for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A continuous prayer, a persistence prayer, a fashionable prayer. Hallelujah. This is what God is seeking for. Have a passion when you come into prayer. That my Lord is going to hear my prayer. My Lord is going to answer my prayer. My Lord is going to hear me and He's going to deliver me. And Psalms 40 says that I cried, I waited patiently, and He heard my prayer. And He delivered me from all the troubles. Hallelujah. What a prayer it is. What a glorious prayer. The psalmist is praying. Hallelujah. We all worship the Lord. Who is like the Lord? Hallelujah. It should not be just with your lips. It should be from your bottom of your heart. Amen. Who is like the Lord? He is powerful. He is mighty. He is a powerful God who is the creator of heaven and the earth. I always love being, I started a new uh, style of going up and watching the sky. The past couple of months I'm doing that. Every day I go and see the sky. I say, the sky is so vibrant, distant. I'm so small. But I'm worshipping a God who built the sky. What a mighty God. And I humble before the grace and I say, Lord, you're so great, O oh God. Only one thing can please my life is only your presence. I sit and I start praying. I know there are a lot of needs in my life, but I know you're able to do it. God is graciously pushing me with those blessings. Every day is pushing me. And I say, I'm not even worthy for this God. You're bringing this by prayer. Even if I have put my man's strength, I could have not done it, I could have not achieved it. But by God's strength, it's by moving miracle. Amen. That's what he's called a miracle working God. A miracle working supernatural God. How? By your prayer. You're so precious in the sight of the Lord. Don't underestimate who you are. They're all are chosen to be a warriors. They're all are chosen to be a great mountain builders, a mountain movers. Hallelujah. You're not just simply, you don't know your identity, you don't know your power. That's why you're simply seated over here. You say, I'm a failed person. You're not failed. 
You have failed as untold prayers. You haven't prayed. That's why you're seated here. When you pray, people will come for counseling. They will come. They will ask, brother, come on, tell, speak out something. I want to hear what the Lord is telling. I feel when you pray, there's a presence of the Lord which is moving from your side. Hallelujah. When you pray, your colleagues, your staff has to feel a, a peace in them. And all the jealousy spirits, all the uh, deviations, minds and spirits, when you're sitting next to your colleagues, you should not feel that. You should feel a great thing. When you're starting a project, pray, Lord, this is the work what you've given for me. If thy will is there, give me the wisdom and knowledge and grace. God will give you that wisdom. God will give you that grace. We don't know why God has placed you in that companies, but definitely God will bless you when you pray. A persistence prayer. One day you might become a boss of that company. Who knows? God is able to do it. He's more than able. If it's his will is there, he will do it. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Let's we ask the Lord. But humbly we will ask the Lord. We will ask God, fashion my life with prayer. You speak to your God. You speak to your daddy Jesus. He is our daddy who died on the cross of Calvary. Who paid his highest price on the cross for your sins and my sins. What a great God. He sent his only begotten son as John 3.16 says. He loves so much you and I. So he gave his only begotten son that you and I would not perish but have an everlasting life. This life is not about temporary. This life is not about a kind of like a, a couple of years, but it is eternally. And the life what is meaningfully spent in the presence of the Lord is going to be eternally with Him. Hallelujah. Let's we ask for the grace what is required for our future days. As the Bible says that uh, when you have a persistent prayer life, God is able to answer that prayer. Amen. It is not about the unanswered prayers, but it is unoffered prayers. That is our mistake of our life. But God has been taught us, we are not going to stop it, but we are going to keep on praying. Keep on praying. Lord, give us the spirit of prayer, O oh Lord. As it was so important for you in the garden of Gethsemane, O oh Lord. You went to the mountain and you started praying. You taught the disciples, you gave the parables that uh, don't stop praying, but keep on praying, O oh Lord. Lose not your heart, but keep on praying. Yes, Lord. We ask El Shirai this morning. We ask for every soul, O Lord. Lord, thank you for the everyone who have come this morning. Lord, bless them, O Lord. Lord, install a prayerful life. Lord. Install a prayerful life, O Lord. Jesus, Lord. Let them know the importance of prayer. Prayer is not about something uh, devotional, God, uh, but is a heart and heart to talk to the Lord. Uh, a heart and heart to talk to the Lord. Uh, a divine connection is uh, a meeting point of humanity and divinity, O oh Lord. Yes, Lord God. Uh, when you pray, you are able to hear our prayers. Uh, when you pray, you are able to respond to our prayers, O oh Lord. This morning, I ask uh, the children, O oh Lord, your children, O oh Lord, uh, give them a heart of prayer, O oh Lord Jesus. Remove all the negative thoughts, negative minds, O oh Lord, uh, weaknesses, uh, which is not allowing them to be focused, uh, uh, concentrated, O oh God, uh, the depressions, the minds, O oh Lord Jesus, uh, Lord, the psychological issues, O oh God, Jesus, uh, the theological issues, O oh God, uh, mental issues, O oh Lord Jesus, uh, physical issues, O oh Lord Jesus, uh, which is not allowing them uh, to draw closer to you, uh, the spirits, uh, which is not allowing them, uh, Lord God Jesus, to be connected with you, I break it in the name of Jesus. Are able to do, O oh Lord. You are a God who loves our souls. You are a God who is able to do all things, O oh Lord. You never change your God. Your love is not conditioned. It's an unconditional love, O oh Lord. The undescribable love, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this morning, O oh Lord. Thank you for this fellowship, O oh Lord. Thank you for the understanding of your word, O oh Lord. We submit and surrender into your gracious mighty answer. We give all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and see you next week. Hallelujah.
It's time to sow a seed. We should sing an indie song called JJ Na Esu. Monday we have prayer in our church from 6 to 7.30. On Wednesdays we have fasting prayer from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Please don't miss it. May God bless you. Amen.